if you learn how to make video games, sooner or later you will have to learn how to make scene transitions. Mostly they are used to go from main menu to the level or from one level to another and sometimes they are used as a way to impress your players. Holy crap! My name is Alex, I make video games and I teach you how to make them too. And in this episode I'm gonna show you how to set up a simple level transition that you can trigger from a button or from in-game portal. It's quite easy to set up and we're going to improve it with a nice fade effect. But before we start, this video is brought to you by me. If you want to learn more about game development, I have a very comprehensive RPG course that teaches you everything you need to know. It has tens of thousands of students that are already making their own video games. And you can join them by clicking the link in the description below. Now let's get started. Making scene transitions is quite simple and I will use this project to demonstrate that. Just a heads up, you don't need this exact project to make it work, but if you do want to have it, I show how to make this entire project in another video. I will leave link in the description below. So first I'm gonna simplify this scene by using solid color as a background and I'm gonna use different color on another level just so we can see the difference. Now we can clearly see the difference between level 0 and level 1. To make transition work, first of all, we need to go to File, Build Profile and add all existing scenes we have into the scene list. So I'm going to drag this one over here. Then we need to make a game manager. I'm going to do empty object and call it game manager. And as a next step, we need to add component of a new script that would be called game manager. Inside of this class, first step is to make it available to any other classes we have in the project. The easiest way to do that would be to make a singleton. We're going to do public static game manager instance and then in the awake we have to type instance equals to this. Now we will be able to call game manager in any script we want and I'm going to show you that in a minute. As of now let's just make public void change level to function and as a parameter we're going to pass string level name. Inside of this function, you simply need to do scene manager load scene with a level name in it. It will add scene management namespace over here on its own, but if it didn't, you'll have to type it manually. Now let's save this and let's go back to Unity. Inside of Unity, you're gonna need a new object. Let's make a 2D sprite square just so we can see where it is placed. And I'm gonna call it level exit. I'm gonna move it over here just so it is working as an exit door from the level to another level. Now we're gonna need to add box collider component to it and make it work as trigger. Once you are sure on the size of the object, you can simply switch off sprite renderer. Don't forget to make it as trigger because this will be important when we trigger in scene transition. Then let's go and create a new script. And we can either call it as level entrance or level exit. I actually think level entrance would make more sense. We're gonna open that script and we simply need a variable that we would use to define what level we're trying to enter. So we're gonna do private string next level name. Then you make on trigger enter to d function and inside of this function you simply need to check which object entered the trigger. Whenever any collider with a rigid body entering the trigger this function will be called with information on the collider itself. So we can simply check uh, collision tag or what I like to do is to check component of the player if it's there or not. So if component of the player is not equals to null, we can take game manager dot instance and simply call change level to next level name. Now let's save this and let's go back to Unity. We're gonna take level exit and attach script to it. And maybe let's rename it to level entrance. And then you give it a level name you want to use when you enter this door. On the scenes, I have level zero and level one. And obviously I'm transferring to level one. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it in here. Now, if everything was done right, I'm supposed to go to level one immediately, which is fine, but we could do system better. Let's go ahead and see it. And yes, I am on level one. Very cool. But we are not done yet. First of all, we could improve the system with a fade effect. And for that, we're gonna need another script. I do have fade effect script over here and I'm gonna show it to you in a second. 
This script is quite simple and it changes alpha of the canvas group with a time. If you want to understand this script better, I did explain it in my last video and link will be down below. And if your main focus just to complete transition logic, then you should know that fade duration controls how long this coroutine runs and by setting target alpha you decide to either hide the screen and make it totally black or make image transparent and show screen to the player. And that is what we're going to set up real quick right now. Let's go and open start function and do fade in which does transition from black to transparent and then let's go and set up game objects in Unity. On the canvas we're gonna need an image and we're gonna call it UI fade. We're going to attach canvas group to it and then we can attach the script itself. Now we need to assign canvas group. We need to change image to black and we need to stretch it so it takes up entire screen. Now when you go to play mode, it will do this smooth fade effect. Very good. Now the goal is to run this fade effect when we enter in the portal and then only we should transfer to another level. So let's do that. On UI fade effect, we have a variable of a coroutine, which stores current running coroutine that we start over here. And we can make game manager wait for that coroutine to finish and then only do scene transition. For that, first of all, we need to make this coroutine available. So we can read it outside of this class. And to do that, you can go ahead and do public get private set which makes it sort of like only read variable. You can change this variable inside of this class, but outside of this class, you can only read it. We go to game manager now, and we have to make another coroutine. If you've never seen coroutines before, you simply should know that they allow you to pause functionality for certain amount of time or frames. I'm gonna call it change level coroutine, and we're gonna give it level name. Then inside of this coroutine, we need to get access to UI fade class. There are multiple ways to find access to class from another class, but in this case, we need something that would find UI fade effect no matter in which scene we are. Because if we just get reference here and then do transition to another level, we will have a problem where a game manager will not have access to UI fade component because we changed the level. If all of that sounds confusing, let me just say this. We're gonna make a private UI fade variable, fade UI, and we're gonna make a private UI fade method, which returns UI fade class. We're gonna call it get fade UI. The main purpose of this function is to find fade UI if we don't have anything assigned over here. So this is how we're gonna do that. We're going to return fade UI, and if anything happened and we lost reference to fade UI, we're gonna find that. We're gonna do that by typing if fade UI is equals to null, then fade UI is equals to find first object by type of fade UI. So now every time you need to use fade UI, you simply use this function, which returns you fade UI variable you have over here. And if something happens and you lose reference to fade UI, for example, if you change level from zero to one, then this function will find fade UI for you. So you can use it again. Now let's go to change level coroutine over here. And when coroutine starts, we're gonna do get fade UI, do fade out. Then we want to make this coroutine wait for fade duration. We could simply go ahead to UI fade and read fade duration there and to make it wait for exactly that time or as I mentioned before, we can make it wait until this coroutine is over. To do that, on a game manager, we go ahead and do yield return, get fade UI, change alpha coroutine. Change alpha coroutine may be not the best name, so I'm gonna change it to fade effect coroutine. And then once coroutine is over, we're gonna do scene manager, load scene with level name in it. Simple as that. Now, when we change level, instead of just directly changing the level, we want to start the coroutine of a change level coroutine with a level name. Let's go ahead and test it. We're gonna save this and we're gonna go back to Unity. I'm gonna start the game. We can see fade effect. Then I'm gonna enter the door, which is over here. And you can see we have fade effect and only then level was changed. Now to complete this system, we need to have fade effect on level one. There are many ways to solve this and the easiest one for now would be to make prefab out of the canvas and then simply use same canvas on level one. 
So we can go here, delete it, and add canvas prefab. And if you ever apply any changes to the canvas, you can simply apply overrides over here, and it will do that for all of the canvas elements you have in all of the scenes. Now let's go ahead and see it again, and we're almost done with the system. There is only something else we need to add. So we do have fade effect, which is perfect, and the only change here we need is to be able to do level transition from level 1, because this one does not have game manager. You could go ahead and copy game manager to level 1. You simply go ahead and make game manager here and you should do that if you want to test some functionality starting in level 1 but usually the best practice is to carry one game manager through all of the scenes in case you need to have some common functionality or settings on the game manager so this is how you can do it you go to the awake and type don't destroy on load game object and now when you transfer from level 0 to level 1 the game manager will be carried from level 0 to level 1. The only problem now is that you might want to have game manager on another level to test something and if you do that you will have two game managers in the scene as a result. So this is what you do in that case. You type if instance is equals to null you assign it but if no you destroy game object. And this will take care of an extra game manager because it will destroy the one that is not assigned to instance itself. Let's go ahead and quickly check that. I'm gonna go to level 0. And we enter in the level. And we do have game manager over here. And we have only one copy of it. Perfect. Now I hope you found this video useful and if you did consider subscribing and don't forget to check my full RPG course by the link down below. And I'm gonna say thanks to my Patreons and give special thanks to Siramo89 and Gianni Maroni. Thanks to you guys these videos are possible.